The 12th work. Hello, old boy. You could set your watch by Mr. Sampson. Every evening he passed our gate at 5 to 7 on the dot. He worked at a bank in the city. Every day at 5 sharp he left the bank to catch the 5.10 from Liverpool Street, arriving at Buckley Station at 6.30. Then he would walk home from the station. I liked Mr. Sampson. Whenever he saw me, he would smile and say, Hello, old boy, with a cheerful wave. I was only a boy then. It was wartime so there weren't many men about. Mr. Sampson was too old for military service. He must have been about 50 at the time. I still remember his black pinstripe suit and his Homburg hat. Our street was on a hill but he would stride jauntily up it. His jaw jutting out bulldog style, his pipe clenched between his teeth, his paper under his arm. Then he suddenly stopped passing our house. I asked my mother what had happened, whether he was ill. She looked awkward and snapped, don't ask so many questions. He's gone away for a bit, that's all. I didn't ask again, but I was still curious about what had happened to Mr. Sampson. I did not have to wait long. Mrs. Jenkins, our next door neighbor, was a terrible gossip and loved passing on bad news over a cup of tea. A week later she was in our kitchen with my mother. I was sent into the bedroom to play but I left the door open and overheard snatches of their conversation. Mrs. Jenkins's voice was loud even when she whispered. It's the dangerous age. Isn't it dear? Having his last fling before it's too late I suppose. She's only 21 they say, a real baby snatcher. Secretary in his office I believe, should be ashamed of himself. It's not surprising. Really I suppose, all the young men are off fighting. They say he's taken her to Scotland, blown all his savings. Dirty old man. If you ask me, it's Pauline I'm sorry for. It won't last of course, it never does, does it? Shortly afterwards, my mother gave me some plum jam to take to Mrs. Sampson. It was winter and, when she opened the door, I was overcome by the smell of the paraffin stove and the stale, busty atmosphere. I was afraid of Mrs. Sampson. She was a big woman with gray skin, like putty. With wisps of gray hair sprouting from her chin. She always wore a grubby, mud-colored cardigan over shapeless dresses. Worst of all, she had bad breath. Here you are dear, she said in her grating voice, and thrust a three-penny bit into my hand, but don't spend it all at once. I fled, back to the relative safety of my own home. I soon overheard another conversation with Mrs. Jenkins. What did I tell you? His floozy left him when the money ran out. Seems he's written to Pauline begging her to forgive him. Take him back. I'm damned if I would. A month later I was in the garden playing when Mr. Sampson passed in the street. But this time he didn't say, hello, old boy. He walked wearily, with a stoop. His head hanging forward, eyes looking at the ground. He reminded me of a whipped dog slinking back into its kennel. I thought of the paraffin stove. The bad breath and the fustiness awaiting him, and my heart went out to him.